1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's start at verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. I believe we've done that this morning best we could. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, I stopped there this morning and had no intention of going any further with that, but when I went back home this evening and, and done a little bit of reading, I'm going to pick up where Brother Butch left off uh, in his testimony. Uh, one spirit, Brother Butch, belongs to God. And, and it goes on, verse 5 says, And then he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren of once, so of whom the greater part remained unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James and of all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we what you think about that? Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. All right? So we preach and so ye believe. Now, I went home there this evening doing a little bit of reading and study, and I got to thinking. I've tried to think many times, and not just today. I've tried to think of how it would have been to walk with Jesus. Yeah. Would that not have been something right. to walk with him? When uh, John the Baptist baptized him, and the dove set upon him, and God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then when he took off from there, the disciples started, and they started following him. And he seen this one, and he seen that one, and he called this one and that one, and they got to watch him. Wouldn't that have been wonderful to got to saw what he done? I mean, first-handed. I, I can't even comprehend. Here they are in a crowd. Here comes the man on the crutch. And he throws a crutch down and runs home and tells everybody what happened. Here's a man sitting by the roadside begging, blind. Jesus comes by and touches him and he goes uh, saying, looky here. And he's seeing everything for the first time. Would well, that not have been amazing? Yeah. That would have been amazing. To stop a funeral possession right in the middle of a funeral possession, carrying a casket, everybody weeping and a wailing. And he said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, boy, go home with Mama. And he'd get up out of the casket and go home. I mean, wouldn't that not have been amazing to see him do that? I mean, I can't even comprehend that greatness. I can't. I can't comprehend how it would have been to sit at the supper after they eat and broke bread that he girded himself and picked up a towel and washed the disciples' feet. I can't imagine being sitting there and Jesus, God, God, washing my feet, showing me how I ought to be a servant. Nothing to do with communion, nothing to do with salvation, just showing me that you ain't too mean to do that. That would have been to me amazing. It would have been amazing to me to went to the garden and watched him pray. I mean, he said to Peter, James, he said, watch. Yeah. They went a little further and said, now you watch. I'm going to go pray, go watch. Yeah. Go watch. Now, I can't imagine what I saw. Now, I was uh, sitting there yesterday evening waiting on Cheryl Ann to get back to the house. And, and I flipped through the TV and I, the Passion of Christ was on. And I don't know about you, but I personally, I enjoy the movie. And it's not exactly right, but it's close enough I can get the meaning. After I read my Bible and know the truth, I sure go. Uh, yes. the enjoyment out of it. Yes. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. But I watched it, and uh, the part I watched was Jesus in the garden, and uh, 
He goes off in there over to pray. He's a praying and the old devil's over off the side of watching him. Yeah. He prays in agony. And I was watching that. And I got to studying about that even yesterday. And I said, man, that'd have been something. That'd have been something. The disciples stand over watching you. Old Peter stand over a Lincoln tree watching Then he got done praying. And I like this little tidbit of that they added to the movie. It was a truth. And I don't know that it was actually there, but it was a good truth. Here was this big snake laying there. Yeah. And that man that played Jesus went over and st stomped his head. Yeah. I enjoyed that, really. I did. I enjoyed that part a lot. And uh, uh, it was Benny's heel, but he stomped his head. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed watching Peter cut off Malchus' ear. I mean, that was, I liked that. There went the ear, blood is flowing. Right? And Jesus bends down and goes on in that moment. I can imagine sin. That would have been something, wouldn't it? Yeah. Can't imagine how it would have been, but I would love to have went and watched. I think I would anyway. When they nailed his hands down to the cross. When they nailed his feet. When they hung him up. Can't imagine the scene there. I tried to preach it and tell it. But I can't really imagine. Right. Knowing that he done it for me. Right. Can't imagine how it would have been Simon Peter to do it and watch that afar off. I can't imagine to watch to be the rest of the disciples as they was hiding around watching all that go off. Can't imagine Mary, his mama, watching all that. I can't imagine that. To me, it would have just been an amazing time to see all that. Right. Watching him die. To me, that would have just been an amazing time. That, would that be amazing to you? <coughs> And then to go and watch him put him in a tomb. Mm. That would have been amazing to me to watch him. Mm. How would I have felt? Would I have remembered that he said, tear this temple down in three days I'll raise it up? Right. Would I not have been like the rest? Would I not have sat down and put my head in my hands right. and said, boy, it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have probably done the same thing right. that he did. Right. Sure. See, they listened to him for several years. They listened and hung on every word. And they was with the living word. And you know what? They went back to that said with us. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said, wait a minute, that ain't what he said. I wouldn't have said. I had bawled my eyes out and said, boy, it's all over. But it would have been wonderful to see all that. But it would have been wonderful to have been sitting there. And the door burst open, and here come Mary right, and said, Y'all got to come and see what's going on. He's yeah. not in there. He's not there. He said, Come and tell y'all. And I wonder what I'd done with Peter and John if I took off a running. Uh, would I run plumb down in the, in the tomb and look to see where he's at? Would I run plumb in there? You know, it would have been amazing to see all that. To me, it would have just been amazing. Absolutely. It would have been amazing. It would have been amazing to walk on the Emmaus Road, discouraged, and all at once, here comes the risen Savior right up in the middle of me and talk to me. Would that not have been amazing? That would have been amazing. But there's even more amazing. Even more amazing. It says here we read it. It says how that he died according to the scriptures. How that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that, that he was seen as seen. Well, that's one. Is it not? Then he was seen in the twelve. Can you imagine what Peter thought the first time? Uh, can you imagine? This is the man I just got through denying and I've got to go talk. Jesus says, you love me. Yeah. Can you imagine? That's the first time Peter did. Yeah. You love me? Well, Lord, you know I do. Do you really? Uh. Do you really? Says he was seen of the twelve. <coughs> he seen all of them there, was he not? Said then he was seen of 500 <coughs> brethren. I wonder who all them 500 brethren were. I wonder if that was the, the dead. I wonder if that was the blind boy. 
What if that was the lame? I just wonder who the 500 brethren. Do you ever wonder? I don't know. Maybe I look at things wrong. I just wondered who they were. Who? What did he do for them 500 brethren? I just wonder. Could you imagine? Are they the ones that he raised their dead people? I wonder if old Jarius was one of them. Was one of he one of the people, one of the brethren that said, Hey, I see a resurrected Jesus, but y'all didn't see what I saw before he ever died. He raised my servant up. I just wonder who his brethren was. Y'all ever wonder who all these people were? Then he goes on and says something else. It says, 500 brethren at once. And then he was seen in James. Then he was of, of all the apostles. And then it says, last of all, he was seen of Paul. Well, that was some time after. You know, that wasn't just a day or two. That was just a few years, you know. That was just a little while. First church had done started. Christ had done arose. And spent time. I wonder what the disciples learned in the 40 days. You know, we don't have no record. No, we don't. We don't have no record of what Jesus taught them 40 days. Wonder what that would have been. Can you imagine? Look what he taught before he died and arose. I wonder how the conversation went at supper time. Well, Jesus, just what happened when he was in that tomb? Just how did it feel to be dead and you alive now? Just how was the pangs of death? Just how was old jaws of death, the hand of death? I mean, I sat there this afternoon and wondered these things. Huh? About just how it would have been. How it would have been. How would it have been to have been standing there and right in the middle of conversation and just start going up? And he says, don't worry. I'm a, I'll be back. Right. Don't worry about it. And look, and here's two angels. Say, Don't be gawking up in the air. This same Jesus that you see going up will come back in like manners. You see him going. I just, would that not have been a great day? Yeah. But then I keep looking at old Paul. Paul saw him. He said, I saw him also as one born out of due season. They got to thinking, would that make a difference? If I saw the resurrected Savior. And I got to thinking. I have. Yes, I have saw the resurrected I have saw. Wait a minute. I have walked with That's right. I have walked with this resurrected Savior. Yes, sir. Well, wait a minute. I have talked. With his resurrected Savior. I have walked with him. I have talked with him. I have seen him by the eye of faith. I have seen him. And I know that he lives. I know that. I know that. I got to thinking. I don't have to wonder how they felt. I know how I feel. I don't have to wonder what they thought about this wonderful Savior, but I know what I think of this wonderful Savior tonight, and I find Him to be better than I can tell tonight. I find Him to be greater than what anybody's ever told me. I find Him to be more than what this Bible even tells me. I find Him to be realer than what people can make Him in the preaching and in the teaching. I find Him to be a risen Savior tonight. Yeah. Yeah, I find him to be. Yeah. I find him to be that very right. thing. So I just got to thinking about them things. Exactly. And as I was thinking, I said, well, it says here, therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And I got to thinking, man, you know what I ought to be doing because he arose? Yeah. Preach. Yes. Well, what should I be a preaching? Wherefore, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. How did Jesus die? According to the scripture. 
how that he was buried and how that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Now, that's what they're talking about preaching. Yep. Right? Well, that's good, I thought. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so ye believe. We preach it, they can be so make believe. Right? Now, don't say, it don't say when, don't say who, this is they. I always wondered who they were. Huh? Who ye and they and them and all those people are? Well, I'm looking at them. Yeah. Ye. Y'all a bunch of yees. Huh? Are you with me? Ye believe. They believe. I believe. Others have believed. Tonight. Now let me give you a couple of thoughts. To all of this is because he lives. All of this is because he lives. Everything that goes on now is because he lived. Right. You know how come in children could sing tonight? It's because he lived. Right. You know how come I was able to preach this morning? Because he lived. Right. You know I would not have had a message this morning had he just died. Yeah. Right. Come on. Because it would have been he died. Yeah. And no hope. Right. He's a dead savior. Right. But there's no hope there in a dead savior. Right. But because he's alive, I was able to preach. Yes. Because he was alive, the girls was able to sing this morning. His life for mine. And it's all about the blood. And it's all about the cross. They was able to, bleed, the, 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 sing all that. That I might know that he done it for me. And that he's alive, willing to do everything else for me right yes. now. Right. I can see all that. All because he lives. You know why we run buses? Because he lives. You know why we visit? Because he lives. You know why we tell people? Because he lives. You know why Rick teaches? Because he lives. Right. What boring Sunday school it would be if we didn't have a living book yeah. and a living Savior. Right. Yeah. Would it not be boring? Yeah. It would have to be boring. It would be like one of them theology books that they give me when I, uh, the association will ordain me and they give me these big books to read. And I said, please don't make me read these books. I can't read these books. There's nothing in them. Yeah. And it was a shame. It was, it was awful. God help American Baptists. Sorry. What I want. Huh? I was American. I was a Baptist. They want me to read a bunch of trashy books. <laughs> Listen to it. But because he lived, we have anything. Right. Right. Y'all know y'all couldn't have sung there's a remedy right. if he hadn't right. been living. Right. Right. We couldn't have sung hallelujah to the Lamb right. Right. if he hadn't been alive. Right. Couldn't have praised him a while ago, Brother Paul, had he not been alive. Right. You couldn't have said about him saving an old sinner, John, if he hadn't been alive. You couldn't have bragged on him for bringing your family to the church house today had he not been alive. See, it's because he lives tonight. Man. Because he lives. There's an old song that says, God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to uh, love, heal, and forgive. Help me. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to preach my Savior lives. Now, listen, I'm going to preach the message now. Because he lives. First point. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives tonight, I can face tomorrow. I do not have to face tomorrow alone because he lives today. That okay? Yeah. I don't have to face tomorrow. Because he lives in the song says, all fear is gone. Yeah. So I don't have to be afraid. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? I, I can face tomorrow. I fight depression. I can face tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, huh? I can face whatever tomorrow brings because my Savior lives tonight. Yeah. 
Yes. Because yes. he lives, yes. I'm not going to face it by myself. He's bigger than yes. what I'll face tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I don't have to be afraid of what tomorrow or any other day holds because he's the one tonight that's great and he lives inside of me. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because he lives. Yeah. Yeah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives. Huh? Let me see, let me go by. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Yeah. I, how about that? Huh? I have a better future because he lives to me. A future is a all there is to me. He's a better day of coming. Hallelujah. He's a good future tonight. Yes. You know how to get it, it's because he lives. Yeah. And he just being dead, I wouldn't have it. But because he lives, yeah. I got a future tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Is that all right? Because yeah. I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living. Yeah. Just because he lives. But there's more. I think I'll just go on and call you leave. Uh, yes. 
I think I'll go ahead and face tomorrow because he lives. I think I'll just go ahead and stay in the fight because he lives. I think I'll just keep on telling the story because he lives. I think I'll keep on trusting him because he lives. I'll keep on depending on him because he lives. And I'll keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm not going to quit tonight. I think I'll just go ahead and go. You got a burden, don't you come on. He lives tonight. You got a problem, you come on. He lives tonight. It getting too big for you to carry, you come on. He lives tonight. You lost, well, I can introduce you to a living Savior tonight. He's your Savior. You let him. Tonight. Father, thank you. Thank you tonight. For all that you give and all that you do. I do appreciate you. Don't deserve you at all. But I sure am glad you're alive. I'm glad I know you. I don't know of you. I'm glad I know you. 